So, this is the billet dyno, but as I said before, like over in the other dyno, there's a cover right here. There's a cover right here. Looks just like this. All right. And water just comes in here. You notice no water goes on that side. Water's only over here. In fact, the only water that ever can get across this literally has to go through that crack right there to somehow, as this thing's spinning, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand RPM, somehow water is supposed to go across this to get in here and be utilized. Guess what? It don't freaking happen. I have some modified rotors that I use. And this does do a little bit. This is an old rotor, uh, no good rotor. But you can see here, instead of just having to go over the center section here, it does also have at least a little bit that water comes up here, fills this cavity, and at least will go over here to get like the outside tip of this area. In fact, you can see where the water runs right in these outside tips. Never gets down here, only runs on the outside. Over here, you can see that water is running a little farther down, down in here, down that area. All right, so what we have done is on this dyno, you see, this is my prototype dyno, and I still run this. I'm putting water on both sides, this side of the rotor and this side of the rotor. Now, what you do have to do is the, uh, you cannot just put water into the absorber and then out have it twist around and then have it output it does have to have a vent so it, with proper venting now this rope or this one because now instead of using the center passage as a vent because i modify and make this bigger you can see that this one here on the billet absorber is a lot bigger you know that's a dash 20 fitting i think it's like a one inch something hole and comes down in here, splits off, and does both si both insides of the rotors. This is doing the same thing. We've made this bigger internally. So water in, water in, all the way around the impeller, and it goes into the, uh, close to the center. Water then spins around and goes out. You have to have a vent on the back side of it. <laughs> so this vent now is directional. So this this absorber is actually only one direction because I've changed the way the venting is. The venting can only be after, see the, the rotation goes this direction. So water comes in here, water builds up pressure all the way around here. And then by the time it, the water comes around, it goes to the outside really hard because of centrical force. This little area has a, is just a vent. There's no water right here. Tons of water right here, no water right here because it's already spun its way all the way around. And then is, is you know, sheared against itself, made its load, torque, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why uh, after I changed this vent, which used to just make it uh, directional because there was no water on this inside of the rotor. There was nothing, there was absolutely nothing. So you could put a vent there. And that's why there's a vent there stock and why this doesn't work any longer when I do this uh, rotation. So as you can see on the actual uh, stand that it goes in, water in, water in, water in, water in. Uh, a lot of water compared to the other dyno over there. Which the other dyno works great. I mean, you know, I've never had as much horsepower on that dyno as I have on this one. Uh, obviously, more water equals more load. If you can have it applied properly and have the right venting, the right outlet size, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now this is the load cell right here. Now as that absorber, see the, the pillow block bearings go, go right there on the stand. So the absorber is right here and it sits nice and free. In fact, if it's not attached to this, it would just sit there and spin 100, you know, 360 degrees. In fact, I've never broken one yet, but there's always a possibility. If uh, this load cell ever breaks, um, it is going to send my absorber just to spinning like crazy and it's just gonna knock everything out. If it tears off the lines, it would just sit there and it's just gonna be carnage. So actually I, on this dyno and on the other dyno, I actually have a safety strap just in case something breaks there so I'm not damaging everything else. But as you can see, this is how that all works and there's 
There's a bunch of stuff that's in the load control, electronics. I don't really do electronics. I just know how the mechanical things work and think of things in a common sense form of this works like this. So if I do this, this must work. That kind of stuff. But uh, as far as the electronics all go, they're on the other side here and the control units out there for controlling the valving for water in. So anyways, uh, I think that's a pretty good illustration in some of exactly how the dyno works, how it absorbs horsepower, um, or torque, doesn't really absorb horsepower, sorry, absorbs that torque and then transmits that torque to the load cell. We're measuring actual load on this cell. So it, the, the math is pretty close, it's not exact, but uh, it's basically one foot from the center of the absorber to the center of this load cell. So uh, one pound of force is one pound of torque. Uh, a thousand foot pounds of torque is a thousand foot pounds of, or a thousand foot pounds of torque is a thousand pounds right here. So if, uh, when this thing is spinning, it's, it's actually quite amazing that this load cell uh, does hold uh, 3,000 plus pounds uh, of torque is what this one is. This is a 3,000 pound load cell. So you literally can hang 3,000 pounds on that eyelet and that bolt and it does work, it's amazing, and just hang that weight right there. So uh, that's how this all works. I hope this has been informative for you. So a little more information, how the dynos work, how we're doing things here, how our changes take, a, uh, take effect and um, I'm just hoping to give you guys good information, stuff that you can learn. So anyways, I'm Steve Morris, Steve Tech. Have a great day.